أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حقا تقاته ولا تعمدن إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم I seek refuge with Allah from Satan he rejected in the name of Allah who is most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillah, once again we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sparing our lives and giving us the health and guidance of coming out and offering our Jummah Salah. All praise is for Allah, who promised a great reward for those who return bad behavior with goodness. I praise and thank him for the good days and for the bad days. I testify that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah alone, having no partners, and I testify that Muhammad, upon whom he peace, is his slave and messenger. The finality of all the messengers and the best of all the prophets May the peace and blessings of Almighty Allah be upon him, his family and companions. My dear brothers and sisters, for today's goodbye, I have chosen a very, you know, interesting topic, and that is countering bad deeds with good deeds and love among the Muslims. Good conduct has a very important role in countering the influence and outcome of misconduct. It erases its bad impact and heals every wound and hard feeling it may have spawned. For this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directs his servants to return every bad deed with a good one. He states, إِدْفَى بِالَّتِي هِيَا أَحَسَنُ السَّيِّئَاتِ The meaning of which, repel evil with that which is better. And this is taken from chapter 23, ayat 96. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reminds us again, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إِدْفَى بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحَسَنُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ أَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌ حَمِيمٌ And the meaning of which, repel the evil with that which is better. That is, Allah's order the faithful believers to be patient at the time of anger and to excuse those who treat them badly. Then verily he between whom and you there was enmity will become as though he was a close friend. Again, this is from chapter 41, ayah 34. The interpretation of this ayah suggests that when you extend a hand of good gesture to a person, who has wronged and insulted you, this attitude will push them to reconcile and thus build an awe for respect and passion in his heart towards you. Then he may become a close friend that cares about you and sympathizes with you. 
requiting misconduct with good conduct or action is a great virtue that only special people can attain. They are the true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who took upon themselves to control their egos and thus their anger. My dear brothers and sisters, it takes a lot of self-constraint for a person to force himself to not retaliate and take revenge for himself. Consequently, this exertion of such an attitude will lead a person to a life of happiness, satisfaction, piety, and felicity in this life and the hereafter. This will lead to the establishment of a pious and a healthy society. The desire for revenge is naturally instilled in mankind. However, if man goes against this instinct and desire and follows the commandments of Almighty Allah by repaying a bad deed or conduct with a good one, he shall be among those whom Almighty Allah raises in status. In this regard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says praising and hailing him. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ sabaru. The meaning of which, but none is granted it. That is this quality except those who are patient. Chapter 41, Ayah 35. No one shall achieve this high status except those who persevere in dealing with ill-mannered people and in withstanding their mischief. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَا يُلَقَاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَزِّنْ عَظِيمِ And none is granted it except the owner of the grand portion or the great portion of happiness in the hereafter and that is paradise and of a high moral character in this world. Again, this is chapter 41, ayah 35. My dear brothers and sisters, their happiness in this life will be the love, consideration, and attention they got from people. You could hardly find an enemy conspiring against them. This happiness is truly the dream of every living creature on the face of this planet throughout his or its course of life. As for happiness in the hereafter, some of the salaf, our pious predecessors, interpreted the meaning of Hazin Azim, that is the great fortune, as paradise. Then the meaning of the aforementioned ayah will be that no one shall raise to the level of this great virtue except he who believes or he who deserves to be in paradise in the hereafter. My dear brothers and sisters, paradise is sufficient to be your ultimate goal and happiness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described it after listing the qualities of benevolent believers and their great virtues. He states, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ أُولَٰئِكَ أُولَٰئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّن رَّبِّهِمْ وَجَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَنِعَامَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ the meaning of which, for such, the reward is forgiveness from their Lord and gardens with rivers flowing underneath, and that is paradise, wherein they will abide forever. How excellent is this reward for the doers 
who do righteous deeds according to Allah's order. Again, this ayah is taken from chapter 3, ayah 136. My dear brothers and sisters, on the contrary, the obscene and indecent person whom people avoid because of his uh, obscenity, lack of restraint in his language, slanderous and repugnant behavior shall have nothing of the matters of his life straight. He deserves no passion and no one shall love him. Look after him, defend him, or pay attention to his interest. Consequently, he will be among the losers, being ostracized and alienated in the society, besides his loss in the hereafter. My dear brothers and sisters, this type of person is the one referred to in the great warning given by the Prophet wasallam in a hadith that states, Verily, of the worst positions on the Day of Judgment are those who designate for the ones whom Allah, or for the one whom people avoid because of their obscenity or wickedness. The warning in this hadith applies to this person regardless of his position in this life, whether he is an important person or otherwise, he will still be avoided for his obscenity. Another narration says, to protect themselves from his evil. And in another hadith it states, verily Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala detests the person who is vulgar and obscene and who speaks with obscenity. And again in another hadith, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explains the situation of uh, Al Muflis saying, The bankrupt person of my nation is he who comes on the day of judgment with prayer and charity, but he also comes after having cursed this person, accused this person falsely, used up the property of this person, shed the blood of this person, and assaulted this person. Then this person will be given from his good deeds, and that person will also be given from his good deeds, until he has no more good deeds in his book so as to pay back all his debtors. He will then be given from their sins and finally will be thrown into the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters, it is a sufficient loss that will not be atoned for. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and never accuse or slander anyone in any way or method, for it will indeed lead you to the ruin of your life in this earth and the hereafter. Return every bad deed or insult with a good one, looking forward to achieving the virtue of such an attitude which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prompts us to have and attain. He, the Most High, states, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولمن صبر وغفر وغفر إن ذلك لمن أزم الأمور and verily whosoever shows patience and forgiveness that would truly be from the things recommended by Allah chapter 42 ayah 43 My dear brothers and sisters, doing righteous deeds rejoices the heart. Aisha radiallahu anha said, A poor woman came to me with her two daughters, and I give each of them a date. She put a, a date in her mouth to eat, and her daughters asked her for more. So she spit the date that she was 
going to eat and give them half each. I was impressed by what she did and I told the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about it. He said, Allah has granted her paradise because of this or free her from the fire. Um Salama asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about her spending on her sons. She said, Will I have a reward with regard to the sons of Abu Salama if I spend on them? When I am, go when I am not going to neglect them anyway because they are my children. She affirmed that she would not neglect them before the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, answered in the positive. Her natural in inclination answered her before he did. My dear brothers and sisters, Islam encourages righteous deeds, kindness towards relatives, and upholding the ties of kinship. It instills compassion and love in society so that the children may grow up righteous. Alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, there are so much, you know, you could uh, say in doing righteous deeds. So let us all take from these couple of ayats from the Quran and from the hadith of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let's, you know, try and do some righteous deeds, inshallah. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala benefit you and me with the guidance of his book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me and you and all Muslims who seek his forgiveness for he is the all forgiving, the all merciful. Barakallahu wa ala wa haqqum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafana wa iyaakum bi ayati zikr al-Hakim innahu ta'ala jawarun karimu maliku barufu Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, in our mother who won a star in our star of fear, when our one one umino be he won out of a colu alley, when I was a bill, he mean Shururian Fusina, Wamin Sayat Yamalina, may Yahadilla who fell a modilla, Wamay Yudlil fell a ونشهد ألا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بأعداد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بأعداد من قاد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يا إذوكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى أولى وأولى وأأز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقيم السلام